Hello my friends, it's Rain here from Rain Francis Art. I'm pulling out the acrylics again today and I'm going to show you how I painted this country winter scene. So let's start. This is what I'll be using for my painting today. I have a dollar store canvas here. It's the size of a piece of paper, 11 and a half by eight. It's I've put it landscape. And I'm gonna be pulling out my dollar store paints to the acrylic ones. They're just these, these cheap ones. They're called Crafters Acrylic. I have a Copenhagen blue and a peacock blue. I have white and yellow. And I have black. I'm not quite sure what I'll be using in the way of paint brushes, but I will definitely put a list in the video notes for you. So I think what I'm going to start with is my background. Now what I want to do is a country winter scene. So there's going to be snow on the ground. There's going to be a nice dark sky with maybe some silhouettes of trees in the back. And I'm going to have a little cabin here. I saw this on a... Um, on a Christmas card and I thought it looked really, really pretty. So I figured, okay, well, I'll do that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my lightest blue, which is the peacock blue. And you know, you don't have to use the exact same things as I do. You can definitely, you know, use any kind of acrylics. Take the colors that you want to use. For me, I probably wouldn't choose these particular colors, but I do want to keep it frugal today, dollar store frugal. So I'm putting some dots of white and that peacock blue onto my canvas. And I'm going to take my large flat brush. It's a, it's a number 12, it says. Yep, number 12. And I'm just going to do this. This is going to be my snowy, uh, snowy ground here. And I want to make sure that the paint comes all the way to the edge of the canvas, which it is not right now. So I'm going to add a little bit more, some white and some of that peacock blue. There we go. And we'll give that a, a little bit of a blend. It's going on pretty thick, so I may have to stop in between to let the layers dry. So that's good for now. Now for my sky, I want it to be a little darker. The darkest blue that they have there is called the Copenhagen blue. So I'm gonna put that everywhere up here. I wanna make sure I have a lot of paint. And I am gonna dot a little bit of black in there too. I may have put on too much paint. <laughs> that's okay. A little black. You don't need too much black. And I'm going to use my same paintbrush, even though it has the white on it. It's not going to be white. It's going to quickly turn dark. Oh yes, I think I have plenty of paint. Like I said, probably too much. I definitely have too much. I'm going to have to wipe some of that off or it's never going to dry. Let me grab a paper towel. I'll wipe some of that off with my brush here and I'll pull some of that off. I'm just wiping off camera. I'm, I'm wiping on a paper towel here just to get the excess off because I put too much paint on my canvas here. But it makes a nice, um, it makes a nice blend when you do that, you know, dropping little bits of paint onto your canvas and then blending it. I like that method a lot. It's easy. It feels very Bob Ross-ish, you know what I mean? I think he probably would have come up with that at some point because he was all about making things easy and fun to do. You know, unless you're a real detail-oriented stickler when it comes to painting, it's hard um, sometimes to do all that detail. And when you can find an easy method to do something that looks really nice, that's when you have to go for it. All right, I'm just bringing that paint down to the snow line here. I might actually have to put more paint on. 
I'll grab some from the edges here actually because there was a bit of an overspill. Just want to try to keep that horizon line. All right. There's a little bit there. I'm going to maybe grab some from the top. I'm going to have to make it a little lower about here. want to make sure it goes all the way to the edge of the masking tape so that when I pull it off it's nicely framed. There we go. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to think about how I want to apply the rest of the paint for the cabin and the sky and the, the moon and all that stuff. So let's let that dry first. My painting is still a little bit wet. The top here is a little wet, but what I'm going to do is work in this area here that's dry, and that's where I'm putting my little cabin. And because we've got the background done, I'm going to outline my cabin with some white. And then I'll put in the colors and the shadows and things later, and I'm using a tiny little number two flat brush. So what I want to do is just kind of outline my cabin with the white. And I'm checking it out here. I've got the, it's a Hallmark Christmas card, but it's got a copyright on it, so I can't show you what I'm using as my, as my uh, reference. But I mean, you can imagine all of those sort of <laughs> Christmas cards and holiday cards, they all kind of have this look about them. So that's going to be sort of the bottom of the cabin there. And then on the top, let's see, it's going to be coming down this way here. Like that. This might go off my page here, my page, my canvas because my masking tape stops there or starts there. I'm having a hard time with my words today. I might make the bottom of the cabin larger because it looks like a mushroom right now. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going to have to be larger, but I'm putting a tree in front of it too, so. You might hear dogs snoring in the background. It's a chilly day today. Yeah, I'm going to make this larger. Maybe in the front too. That looks a little better. Looks more like a house than a mushroom. This is going to end up pretty dark in the end because I want it to kind of be in the shadow. Okay, now we're going to put a little chimney on top. There, a little chimney. Now, I would like to paint the moon. For that, I need a fine liner, fine liner brush. This is a number four fine liner. Look at it now and then I'm going to get it wet and look at how fine the tip is. It's really like using a fine tip marker. It's great. Now let's see if I can do the moon. I'm going to put the moon right about here. I'm thinking of a crescent moon. My canvas is not completely dry, so in between putting the white on, 
I'm going back in and wiping it down so that I don't, uh, I'm, why, why am I saying I'm wiping it down? I'm cleaning it in water and wiping it on my paper towel. There we go. <laughs> I was doing some kids videos today and they're drawing videos. So I tend to, uh, speak in different terminology for the kids videos. And sometimes I start talking like that in these videos, you know, how you guys doing? You guys doing okay? Do you need to take a break? Oh, a little water. <laughs> That's me talking to the kids, you know. A little water was on the edge of my brush and it dropped onto my canvas. No big deal. Just have to make sure there's no water at all. Because what happens when I dip it into the water, uh, water tends to sort of stick itself there. And when I'm painting, it, it falls like a drop onto the canvas. I may have to come in and put a second layer in there. After it dries, that is. Because that's wet and that's as white as that's going to get right now. So we'll come in and we'll put a second layer in after and I'll try to shape it better. Now, what can I do? I think what I'm going to do is make some silhouette trees in the back here. Now for that, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to take that dark, the dark Copenhagen blue and I'm going to mix just a little bit of black in there because I really want it to be a shadow. See, I've got those in there, those two. I'm going to mix those up so we get a darker, almost a gray. Oh, that's a nice, uh, that's a nice one. That's like a gray. I like that. Very nice. So I'm going to go in and start putting in trees in the back. And I'm, I'm dotting. Or tapping, I should say. Ooh, my little hound dog Jack is really snoring. <laughs> I'm just tapping them in. This is a Bob Ross thing too. Tap, tap, tapping in the trees. Because we just want a little shadow. And by the way, I'm just using a round brush. It is, I believe, a number four. Yeah, number four round brush. Jack is really snoring. <laughs> it wouldn't be an art video if there weren't snoring dogs in the background. All right. I really like this a lot this tapping thing. This reminds me kind of of where I live. I live in the mountains and I have two acres of woods on my property and very few neighbors, which is gorgeously cool. <laughs> I live in what you might call cottage country, so I have one full-time neighbor and he's a good half kilometer away from me. And the rest of the people who come up, they come up on weekends, maybe for a week in the summer, something like that. Actually, my immediate neighbor to the, to the south of me, he has a little three season cabin and he's only been up here twice this year so far and for only one day 
One time he came to just mow his lawn. <laughs> and then he was up last weekend with uh, his wife and her friends, I guess. All right, I've got to be careful here. Don't want to get any into the, into the house. And I'll just put something back here. There we go. So that looks like a little bit of forest in the background there. Okay, so that part's done and we're going to work on, let's see, this is still slightly wet. So I'm gonna work on the house because the house is now dry. I want some of that Copenhagen blue, but I want it to be a little darker because as you can see, this is, this is how it comes out here. And I want it to be darker, but not that dark. I still have some of that grayish color on my brush. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that and see what I can come up with here. I still want it to be blue and not gray or more blue than gray, I should say. Okay, let's see how that looks. I think that'll work. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna do an outline of the house. Ooh, big snore there. I just don't want it to get lost in the sky, so I'm gonna add a little more blue because it looks like the same color as the sky there and I don't wanna lose my shape. I am gonna add some white to this though because I want it to look like there's snow on the roof. good for now. If I wipe a little off there. It's kind of mixing with the white underneath now, so that's good. I'm able to see the outline of the house. I want to see that chimney too. All right, that's good for now. Okay, I'm gonna clean off my brush. Now, I'm taking that fine liner brush again and I'm just gonna take a little bit of the same blue color because I wanna make a little window or a couple of windows. Let's start with one. Okay, I'll do two, two little windows here. Oh, maybe three. Let's do the three, the three rule. There we go. My sky is nice and dry. So I'm gonna take my liner brush. It's very clean and I'm gonna add to that moon. Is this all dry? Okay, that's all dry. I just don't want to get any paint on my on my hand or on my sleeve. Might make it a little thicker. get all the sky behind covered. If I have to, I'll put in a third layer of white. But I think that's gonna be all right. All right, now what do I wanna do? Let's take a look here. 
I'm going to take my number four round brush again and I'm going to put the littlest bit of white on it like there's hardly any on there and wherever the trees are dry I'm just going to put a little bit of white like this but I want to wipe off my brush and come and tap on that a little more and you know in between I may take some of that gray again and go over it because I don't want it to be completely white you know I want there to be an illusion of snow on the trees but not completely white like mostly when you see trees the uh, the snow is usually on the branches not in the middle of the tree so I'm going to try to make sure that happens I'm just going to look through my camera lens because I have a terrible glare here okay I think that'll be alright put a little more white there just on the edges of the trees I have to make sure I wipe it off every time I don't want to mix my black with my with my white. See, that would be too much white on there, so I'm going to grab some of that gray right away and erase some of that out. that looks good like I said I have a really bad glare and it's hard for me to hard for me to see and some of that gray color that I mixed up You guys don't mind listening to my dog snoring, do you? <laughs> Hope not. Because he's my little fella. He's not doing too well. Jack is very old. He's got some nose problems too, which is must be hard for a hound dog. Not fair, huh? Hound dog uses his nose and he shouldn't have issues with his nose. You know, it's like um if a chef all of a sudden had issues with his taste buds, you know how devastating that would be. And my poor little hound dog, he, he scents everything. He's a, he's a tracker. He, he likes to track, especially when we go out in the woods. <laughs> so many little critters out there. He can smell everything. If he sees a deer track or a moose track or even a mouse track, his nose is right on that. And he's following that scent. It's really, really cool to see, actually. I'm just adding some of that gray over the white so it's not too white, okay? And I'll finish up this one here. I'm doing the same thing. First, a little bit of white. 
and then some gray over it to make it less white. There. This I like. Now what I'm going to do is take a little bit of that uh, Copenhagen blue and mix it with my white and kind of do this. Get a little black there. take some of that gray again. I just want to add some, I'm basically just putting back in what I, what I took out because <laughs> I want some of those kind of needles to show at the bottom, you know, that's okay. That'll work. Maybe I'll just erase some of them. <laughs> I've got too much water on my paintbrush. There. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. A little bit of water, a little water droplet fell there. Okay, very good. Now, I did bring out my yellow. I have my yellow here. I'm going to put it a little bit on, onto my palette. Gonna get up, take a look, make sure my camera is still rolling. Very good. And I'm gonna take my liner brush, that very thin number four liner brush, dip it into the yellow and into the window. All three windows. There's some cozy fire going on in there, which is so nice in the winter. <laughs> now I'll see how it looks with one layer, but I may actually put a couple of layers of yellow. We'll see. And when it's all done, I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow coming out of the windows, sort of highlighting the snow underneath. And speaking of snow, I'm going to take a fresh flat brush here and put it in white. I'm just going to put a few, a little idea of snow here. Maybe a larger, my larger flat brush here. Right up against the house. I'm going to put a little water on my brush to make that a little softer. I don't want to lose that blue that I originally put on, but I just wanted a little more white. Okay, there we go. I'm going to leave that at that. Now I think I'm going to work on the house again. And I've got that small flat brush. I think it's a number two flat brush. I'm going to put that into that dark gray color and very, very carefully paint the bottom of the house gray. I may need my liner brush after. We'll see. I don't have very steady hands. Oh, that worked out very well. I love flat brushes for straight lines. Right? 
I'm using the tip of the brush. The bottom doesn't have to be straight because there's snow on the ground, right? So we can kind of leave it like that. There's something very meditative about his snoring right now. <laughs> I feel super relaxed listening to him. Don't stop, Jack. <laughs> So that's the bottom. Now what I want to do on the top, I want to take a round brush and I've got that number four round brush here. And I'm going to sort of mix it with some water into a different pan here. Just a little white mixed in with water. I don't want it too, too watery more paint than water, but I want it to be very transparent because I want to put some smoke coming out of the, the chimney. And I was trying to make it circular. Now what I'm going to do is the same thing I did with the um, down here. I'm, I'm just getting a little bit of water on my paintbrush and I want to make it very transparent. And I may pull some of that off. I'm going to pull some of it off. I'm wiping my paintbrush on a paper towel off camera, okay? Let me take a look at how that looks up here. I might grab a little paper towel and blot that a little because I want it to really look more transparent. Okay, now I'm taking my liner brush into the white with the water in it. I'm going to do a little shapes like that and then blot them out. If you look at smoke, it doesn't, there's not a straight line usually when you see smoke, so I'm going to put some smoke over here and then blot that out too. Whoa, that's a lot of white. <laughs> Let's blot most of that out. There we go. That's going to work. Okay. So I need a flat brush right now. I'm going to grab a small flat brush, number two flat brush. And for the roof, not sure what to do. I'm going to go in with that Copenhagen blue. Just put some of that Copenhagen blue in there. And I want to grab some white and mix that with the blue. I'm going to go between blue and white right now. Where's my white?
I'm just trying to get a smooth edge here on the side. A little more white. The chimney is white too. So I have to remember that. I'm going to put a little blue in here. Just some streaks of blue. But the chimney I want to be really white. Well, not that white. Let's add some blue down to the roof a little bit here and I'll put some on the chimney. I'm not liking the way the bottom of the cabin looks, so why don't I just add a little bit of that blue? It's a little too black, you know? I want it to be dark, but I don't want it to be black. Sort of mixing with the black here, turning into a dark or a, a light gray, which is good, I think. Might make it a little darker. Just try not to get any into that, uh, into the yellow. Now I'm going into the gray again and I'm just gonna put a few little bits of black here, or gray. Darker gray. Okay, I think that's better. It looks better, you know, with a little uh, gray instead of black down there. That was just too much of a difference, you know, to... Oops, I got some of the yellow. I'm gonna have to fix that after. That's all right. That looks a bit better, I think. All right, so what can I do now? How exciting, how exciting. <laughs> I'm going to take my number four round and I'm gonna go, if I have any of that gray that I made, it was um, some blue and black. And I wanna put a tree right here. Maybe I'll put it over here, that way I can hide the mistake that I made with the yellow. Just tapping. And I'm definitely gonna to have to put a, uh, a second layer on this because I want it really dark. I have to wait till it dries first though. Okay, I want the roof to be just a little darker. So I will add some black, blue, and white together to make a nice gray a bluey gray. And I'm gonna put in just a little bit. But I'll leave the chimney white where it is on the top little bit of snow falling over. Let me grab and get erase that there. Too much water. All right. Just add maybe a little dark. Oh, that might be too dark. funny there but it won't when I'm finished with it hopefully <laughs> I do want to let it dry though first all right let me take a quick look what I want to do I think what I can do now is I can make a little shadow because this is all dry here actually no not yet I have to wait till the house dries so I'm gonna pause for now and when everything's dry I'm going to fix up the shadows here I'm gonna put in some more for the tree 
maybe a little bit of snow on the top and some stars in the sky. Okay, so my canvas is more or less dry. There's a little bit of the tree that's still wet, but that doesn't matter. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my yellow and I'm really gonna thin it out because I wanna have a little bit of a glow coming from the window. And I'll do the same thing with the other window. I've really thinned it out. I want it to sort of go onto the snow too. There we go. That's all I need to do for that. And with that same round brush, I'm really, really wiping it down and making sure it's as dry as I can get it. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put a little bit of snow. I've got a little bit of blue here so I'm going to make like a light blue color and I need a little more white in there. There, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just a little snow on the roof. Maybe coming down the side a little bit. Just like that. There could be some more snow down here. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in between here. There we go. Just wondering, maybe a little more here. Just blending it so it doesn't look, you know, too stark there. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna dry my brush off again very, very well. I don't want it wet at all. And I'm basically using black at this point. I've got a little bit of black here. I wanna thin that out and make my tree. I'll put the, there, trunk first. Tap, tap, tapping. With the tip, tapping with the tip. Now what I do is I tap it into the paint and then I try to get some off. And then with the tip of my paintbrush, I'm tapping. just a little bit. Okay, so there's our tree. I'm really liking this cute little winter scene. This is so relaxing. And my dog's snoring, like I said, it's somehow meditative. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I've already prepared, I have to, sorry, I'm gonna rinse off that number four round brush. Actually, no, I'm gonna look for my number two round brush. This is a smaller number two round brush. And I've already mixed in some water and some white acrylic paint, because I'm gonna do some splatter. Now for the splatter, it really has to be wet. And I always say, tap it first, or you're gonna get big blobs everywhere. And I'll just take um, just any paintbrush. snowing. I'll dip it in again. Tap. And it's okay if it gets onto the trees and the house because snow gets everywhere. Though it usually doesn't snow with the moon out. We're going to pretend that it does. <laughs> Could be a starry sky. 
but there's definitely some snow there. I'll put some onto the ground too here. There we go. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Why don't I take off the masking tape? Move all of my palettes and we'll see what the finished painting looks like. You know, these dollar store canvases aren't so bad. You know, if you just wanna have a little bit of fun and you know, you're not selling it like this, but you could. Canvas is canvas. Some is better than the other, I know that, but this isn't so bad. Excuse my hand in front of the camera. Let me pull this off here. So there's my finished painting. How cute is that? <laughs> I really enjoyed doing that. And I love that I use dollar store products for all of this. I mean, you don't have to spend a lot of money to, to create art, definitely not. So this is my country winter scene with acrylic paints. I hope you enjoyed it, my friends. And if you did, please like and subscribe and please share this with anyone you think might enjoy it. And do leave me a comment. I love your comments and I reply to all of them. So we'll see you next time on Rain Francis Art. Take care, my friends, and stay warm. Bye.